Hi there, welcome to today's vlog and Happy New Year. Welcome to the first vlog of 2019. Just before Christmas, there was chaos at Gatwick Airport as a drone was apparently being flown across the airport. But then was there a drone? The police said maybe there wasn't a drone. They arrested two people, then they released them without charge. And it was an absolute utter let's just leave it there. Now I've owned a drone now for two and a half years and if you're a regular subscriber to this vlog and I hope you will be if you're not already you will know that I've used I use the drone less frequently at this time of year mainly because it's cold but it gives me a fantastic perspective it enables to produce some amazing b-roll uh, if you go through all the various different drone footage especially when I'm making um, feature some of my feature short films such as the ones I've made about the first world war the drone just gives you a fantastic perspective and a they're amazing, amazing things. But there are certain rules that you should abide by when you're flying the drone. If you don't, you tend to get in trouble. Now, last week when I was back up in Fleetwood, it gave me an opportunity to go and fly the drone in a place which is perfectly safe to fly a drone. There's no buildings nearby. The CAA rules, which I've linked to below, say that you mustn't fly within 50 meters of a building. Uh, you can't fly over crowds of people. You can't be doing it for commercial. You can't be in endangering an aircraft. That's the principal thing. That's what went wrong at Gatwick. If there was a drone there, people are flying a drone and then down during aircraft. You can't do that. My DJI Phantom 3 does not let me fly anywhere near an airport. I'm not that I've tried, of course, I'm not that stupid, but certainly where I live, we live near a historic airfield. I make sure I fly outside of the flight path of that. But even if I take the drone up to 25, 30 feet, there's always a warning that I'm approaching an airport and I've got to be sensible. Now, at Fleetwood, it's just massive open space. There's kind of no or very little radio interference. So I took the drone down there and I just wanted to show you some of the more sensible ways to fly the drone. So rather strange it won't take off. It says the battery's too cold. So I'm going to try and incubate the battery a little bit and then we'll see if we can get this thing flying. One of the big key rules with drones is not to obviously be stupid of flying it near an airport. Secondly is making sure, according to the CAA rules, you've got to have at least 50 metres clearing space between you and the nearest building. Obviously here on the beach, there is no building anywhere near me. I'm massively away from any buildings. I'm mild, you know, there's no p crowds of people to fly over. And the third final golden rule of flying the drone, particularly in the UK, is that I am not getting paid for to fly this. It's not a commercial thing. So I'm abiding by all the rules. So I have nothing to be fearful of as long as you stick to those rules. Those rules are already in place, already keep people safe. They keep you as a sensible drone user safe. And you can enjoy your drone and show off the great cinematic footage that you can get which even just five, six years ago would have cost hundreds of thousands of pounds to have made. So I've changed the battery over. Hopefully, this battery will not be as cold and will actually fly. So I've had it in front of the heater for five minutes. Let's see what happens. She's overboard and self 
The next thing to fly the drone sensibly is to check your flight path. Check there's nothing in the way. Always have a good look up before you take off. Always have a good look around. Keep your ears and eyes open. Obviously I'm flying here in a place where there should be no air traffic, but there are lots of seagulls. I need to make sure I don't knock them out of the sky. Quite often what I'll do is I'll run a test run, then I'll program it into the computer and then film the next run as it were. So this run, I won't necessarily use the footage of. screen but the great thing about these DJI Phantom 3s is they have the return to home function so if it was returning home I managed to regain control of it and landed it um, but yeah it's actually pretty sensible the great things to have now of course if I've been flying that in the build up area or had difficulties like that I could have really been in trouble with that drone once I lost contact with it um, it shouldn't have happened like that I'm not entirely sure what happened I think after I went to put the drone back in the car, there was a guy flying another drone around. I wonder if it created some interference from that. Who knows? But certainly I was in a safe environment for it when I lost contact with it for a little bit or I couldn't figure out what I was able to do was to fly back along its flight path. So I hope you found that useful. Certainly for me, I don't think there needs to be any more legislation involved. I think people who have drones need to be sensible and that's the most important thing. I certainly think if people are flying them into prisons, flying them over airfields, they're stupid idiots and they shouldn't have drones and they should have them taken off them. But the rest of us, you know, who are using them sensibly, who are abiding by the rules and who want to get great footage so that they can share it with people and enhance the quality of the uh, creative content they're making, then I think people should just leave us to get on with it. Thank you very much for watching this. I'm going to be back with a proper saxophone vlog and everything else like that. Make sure you check out my last vlog here. This is what I was up to this time last year. Hit that subscribe button if you don't already and I'll see you really soon. Bye bye.